E300, Fall 2016. This is Module 1, Video 2, the Laplace Transform. In this video, we'll look at the formal definition of the unilateral Laplace Transform. We'll explore the example when the waveform is an interest, uh, of interest is constant. We'll introduce the concepts of the region of convergence and of poles and zeros. We'll then look at the Laplace Transform of the exponential waveform, the unit ramp, and a short pulse. We'll summarize what we did here, and then we'll have a brief look at the topics of the next video. So what is this Laplace transform? The unilateral Laplace transform, donated, de designated by cap F of S, of a waveform F of t, is defined as the integral from 0 to infinity of F of t times e to the minus s t dt. S equals sigma plus j omega is a complex variable called the complex frequency. j is the square root of minus 1. Since s is complex, even uh, so is e to the minus st, which is e to the minus sigma t times e to the minus j omega t, which is e to the minus sigma t times cos omega t minus j sine omega t. Even when f of t is real valued, cap f of s, the area under f of t e to the minus st between 0 and infinity, will be complex valued. Unilateral means that f of s only depends on the values of f of t over one side of the real variable t. There's no information about f of t for t less than zero uh, in the unilateral Laplace transform. Let's take a quick look at the properties of e to the minus st. The complex exponential e to the minus st has a real part, which is e to the minus sigma t cos omega t, and an imaginary part, which is minus e to the minus sigma t sine omega t. Here we show the real part of e to the minus st for six different values of s. When the real part of s is positive, e to the minus st is a growing waveform. When the real part of s is positive, e to the minus st is a decaying waveform. When, the real, when e to the minus st uh, has zero real part, the waveform is a constant amplitude, even when it has an oscillatory component. So whether the Laplace integral has a finite value depends on the real part of s. Consider the Laplace transform of the constant waveform f of t equals 1 for t greater than or equal to 0. Plugging this into the Laplace integral, we get integral from 0 to infinity of 1 e to the minus st dt. Since e to the minus st blows up for real part of s less than 0, and since e to the minus st is constant for real part of s equals 0, the integral is only finite when e to the minus st is decaying, that is, when the real part of s is greater than 0. In that case, the integral of e to the minus st is 1 over minus s times e to the minus st evaluated as the limits of 0 and infinity. At the upper limit, when the real part of s is greater than 0, e to the minus st goes to 0. At the lower limit, e to the minus st is equal to 1. So the result is the integral evaluates to 1 over s as long as the real part of s is greater than 0. We call this region in the complex plane where the real part of s is greater than 0 the region of convergence. And we can indicate that on the s plane by hatching in the area of the region of convergence. Since waveforms grow or decay at certain rates, we can see that it is how the product of f of t e to the minus st behaves for different real parts of s that determines whether we can find a formula for the Laplace transform of different waveforms and over what regions in the s-plane that formula, uh, the integral, will converge. For f of s to be finite, we need for the product of f of t e to the minus st to go to zero as t goes to infinity, which means that when f of t is constant, e to the minus st has to be decaying. When f of t is increasing, e to the minus t, st has to be decaying faster than, e to the minus, than f of t is increasing. And when f of t is decreasing, then e to the minus st can be growing, but not as fast as f of t is decreasing. Since e to the minus st decays faster than, uh, as the real part of s gets bigger, then the region of convergence will always be to the right of some smallest value of s where the real part is more positive than the value for which the Laplace integral converges. That means that the region of convergence will always be a right half plane in the S plane. If f of t is zero over uh, a finite interval, um, if f of t is zero except over a finite interval, then the Laplace transform will be the finite for all finite values of s. We call the value of s that makes the formula for f of s blow up a pole. 
and we denote it, denote it on the s-plane by an x. The region of convergence, uh, since a, a pole can't be in the region of convergence, since f of s is finite in the region of convergence, so the region of convergence must be to the right of the rightmost pole. We call the value of s that makes cap f of s go to 0 a 0, and we denote that on the s-plane with a 0. The Laplace transform of 1 over s has a 0 at infinity, and we don't show that on the, s, on the finite s-plane. The s-plane with poles and zeros indicated is called a pole zero diagram. It's also called a pole zero map. Since the region of convergence is to the right implicitly of the rightmost pole, we don't have to show that on the pole zero map. Even though the region of convergence indicates the values of s where the Laplace integral is finite, our formula for cap f of s is valid over the entire s-plane except where there are poles by a property of complex variables called analytic continuation, and that's beyond our scope here. Something else to note, the Laplace transform only depends on the values of f of t for t greater than or equal to zero. We can't distinguish among the Laplace transform of any of the waveforms shown here where f of t is equal to one for t greater than or equal to zero, no matter what f of t does for t less than zero. We only use the values of f of t for t greater than or equal to zero in our Laplace transform. That's what makes it the unilateral Laplace transform. Let's work another example, this time the case of an exponential waveform. Let's start with an exponential that's decaying with a real valued uh, rate minus alpha. Here's the exponential f of t equals e to the minus a t for t greater than or equal to zero. When alpha, when alpha is a real number greater than zero, that's a decaying exponential. We plug f of t into the Laplace transform for integral, add the exponents of the multiplied exponentials. This time, as long as the real part of s is greater than minus alpha, the integral will be finite. So we bring minus s plus alpha into the denominator of the integral and evaluate it to the limits of infinity and zero. The pole zero diagram, uh, so the pole zero diagram has one pole at s equals minus alpha, so the region of convergence will be to the right of that pole. There's also a zero at infinity, not shown. We can generalize this to the complex exponential with a complex frequency s naught. This time the integral will converge as long as the real part of s is bigger than the real part of s naught, resulting in cap f of s equal to 1 over s minus s naught with a pole at s naught. This is the general case for complex value at s naught, but it's shown here for s naught equals minus alpha plus j beta, where alpha is equal to one and beta is equal to two pi. The real part is a cosine with a decaying exponential envelope. The imaginary part is a sine with a decaying exponential envelope at the same, decaying at the same rate, oscillating at the same rate. The pole has a negative real part and a positive imaginary part. It's in the second quadrant of the complex plane. The region of convergence is to the right of minus alpha. We can do the same thing with our original exponential where s0 is equal to minus alpha. Here we get the decaying exponential back. Again, the pole is at minus alpha, and the region of convergence is to right of minus alpha. If we let s0 equal 0, we get back the constant case that we started with. So the pole is at s equals 0, and the region of convergence is to the right of the pole. We can let s equal j beta, purely imaginary. In this case, we get a constant amplitude cosine for the real part of the waveform and a constant amplitude sign for the imaginary part. Here the pole is on the j-axis at j beta. We can have a positive value for s0, s0 equals alpha, real alpha. In that case we have a blowing up exponential, but the transform is still 1 over s minus s0, where s0 is alpha. Here the real part of uh, alpha is a real number, so the pole is on the positive real axis and the region of convergence is to the right of the pole. Finally, we can let s0 equal alpha plus j beta, where again we get oscillatory behavior, but we get an exponential envelope on the oscillatory behavior. Here the pole is in the first quadrant at alpha plus j beta. In every case, the location of the pole tells us the value of the complex frequency exponential. This is one of those facts you should deal, drill deeply into your knowledge. The poles of a Laplace transform tell us about the signal it's a Laplace transform of. Let's shift to another waveform of interest, which is the ramp. Let's review here, I'm sorry. 
um, when f of t is an exponential, whether it's real valued, complex valued, it's growing, decaying, constant amplitude oscillation, or just a constant, the location of the Laplace transform pole tells you the rate of the exponential. Now let's look at the unit ramp. This is f of t equals t for t greater than or equal to zero. To find its Laplace transform, we have to use integration by parts. Identifying u as t and dv as e to the minus st dt, then the Laplace transform integral becomes the product of t and 1 over minus s e to the minus st evaluated to limits infinity and, and 0 minus the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over minus s e to the minus st dt. The first term vanishes as, at the upper limit if s is in the region of convergence because e to the minus st goes to 0 faster than t goes to infinity. The lower term vanishes because t equals 0. The integral is the same as the integral we did for the constant waveform, and it's equal to 1 over s, so cap f of s equals 1 over s squared as long as the real part of s is greater than 0. We say that the Laplace transform of the ramp has a double pole, or a second order pole, or a pole of multiplicity 2 at s equals 0. We indicate the pole location using the x. We put an arrow from the pole uh, to the pole order in parentheses. Uh, to the pole. So here we put 2 pointing to the pole at the origin. There's also a double zero at, uh, as s goes to infinity. As a preview of coming attractions, note that t is t times 1 and that the pole for the Laplace transform is t of t is the square of the pole of the Laplace transform of 1. When you have a pole squared, it means multiplying by t in the time domain. Now let's look at the short poles. In certain cases, like the waveform being a short duration pulse, then the Laplace transform will exist for all values of s. Consider the waveform that is 1 between 0 and 1, and 0 for values of t greater than 1. The Laplace transform is a finite integral from 0 to 1 of e to the minus st, which is just 1 minus e to the minus s over s. Here we see that we sometimes have powers of e to the minus s in our Laplace transforms. We can think of our waveform as a constant, less a delayed version of itself. We'll see that when we have powers of e to the minus s in our Laplace transforms, it means something's been delayed. The integral should have been finite, but it looks like it has a pole at s equals 0. So why is that? Let's see if there are any zeros in cap f of s. For a function written of s written as a fraction, a value of s that makes the numerator vanish will be a 0. Are there values of s that make 1 minus e to the minus s vanish? We know that e to the j 2 pi k, where k is an integer, is the same thing as 1. So if we replace 1 by e to the j 2 pi k, we can see that f of s has an infinity of zeros at integer multiples of j 2 pi. So what happens um, at 1? at s equals 0, where there's both a pole and a 0. The pole at 0 and the 0 at 0 cancel each other out. And what's the value of f of 0? We can approximate e to the minus s as 1 minus s using a Taylor series, so at, uh, near s of approximately equal to 0. In that case, that means that cap f of 0 is equal to 1. The short pulse has no finite poles. It has zeros at integer multiples of j2 pi uh, j2 pi, were, uh, except at the origin. There are poles at minus infinity, and the region of convergence is the entire finite as plane. So in this video, we've introduced the idea of the unilateral Laplace transform. We found the Laplace transform for constant exponential, const, com, complex exponential, ramp and short pulse waveforms. We've introduced the idea of the region of convergence, an area in the s-plane where the Laplace interval is finite. We found the poles of cap f of s, the values of s that make it f, cap f of s go to infinity, and we introduced the idea of the zeros of f of s, the values of s that make f of s equal to zero. For an exponential waveform, we found that the pole value is the rate of the exponential waveform. When um, the waveform was a ramp, it had a double pole, and we introduced the idea that multiplying by t in the time domain gives the square of the pole in the frequency domain, and then we had the short pulse that only had zeros and had a region of convergence that was the entire finite s-plane. 
In the next video, we'll develop the properties of the Laplace transform, including linearity, the delay property, the multiply by an exponential property, the differentiation property, the integration property, and the multiply by a ramp property.